Good afternoon. I can see a lot of familiar faces here and uh, just a very short announcement that we were waiting for a few more minutes for people to arrive. Okay, since we have a very packed schedule, I think I, I, I will just start now. Good afternoon, everybody from Frankfurt. Uh, good morning to you, wherever you are. Bonjour. Um, thank you for joining us for this preview press conference here today. Um, I think in, in about three, today in three weeks, we will have our big opening day at Frankfurt Buchmesse, and we are all very excited about that. So today we just wanted to give you a, a brief overview over Frankfurt uh, Buchmeister as it is this year, where we stand right now with our planning. And we're super excited that we have three guests uh, tuned in from Canada. Two are actually here with us in Frankfurt. Um, so we will start with Jürgen Booth, the director of the Frankfurter Buchmesse, to, uh, to give us a brief overview. Um, then we will, uh, I, I was hoping that Gabi Rauchner would be here with us, but um, she might join us a bit later. She will talk about the hygiene and safety measures, or, or I will do it. Um, and then very, a very warm welcome to Gillian Fizé, the Executive Director of Canada FBM 2021, and Jennifer N. Weir, the Associate Executive Director of Canada FBM 2021, who is here in Frankfurt together with Gonzalo Zoldi, the Creative Director and Co-Founder of Mimari, and we had already this morning witnessed this exciting presentation of the guest of honor pavilion and we're very happy that he will demonstrate it to us again in the afternoon um if you have questions afterwards please use the f and a the, the uh, q and a um tool here in zoom so we will take the questions from there and i would now pass over to jürgen thank you Uh, so, good morning, good afternoon, bonjour à tous. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here in this little press conference. I'm very excited and actually I can hardly believe it that finally Frankfurt is taking place again in a physical form and uh, in a digital form as well. But uh, we've been waiting for this moment now for like it feels like a hundred years, but uh, actually after having had a digital fair only last year, uh, I think it's about time that we see each other again. I'm going to go briefly through the numbers so you get an idea what to expect in, in uh, Frankfurt this year. And I had asked our team, uh, uh, Katrin, uh, uh, Gabi, uh, to join us as well. Since it's been quite a team effort uh, together with our Canadian colleagues after we had to postpone the guest of honor invitation to this year to set up everything. We've been planning uh, physical events. Uh, we went into digital only, then we went back into physical. It's been tough times. I think for all of us has it been like this, but now I'm happy. So, and happy means that we are going to have this book fair. It's going to be quite international. Right now, at this point of time, we have about 1500 exhibitors on the ground here in Frankfurt. These exhibitors do come from 74 countries including 41 national stands. So it's really going to be a, quite an international event this year. Also, we do have a lot of travel restrictions, which means that especially our friends from the United States, from Latin America are still struggling to come to Frankfurt, but there will be some representatives. We have about 70 tables in the Lit Arc in our eight, uh, literary center uh, this year. We are going to use um, six levels in our halls. So it's going to be a substantial fair. We have more than 200 authors in Frankfurt this year. 
we created uh, quite an extensive uh, trade program, which actually, which is quite interesting to see. Uh, it's an experiment. We're starting with our academic conferences and with our trade conferences before the book fair, actually the week before. So it will be interesting to see um, uh, how this works out. Again, this is a, a new uh, book fair for us, as it usually is every year. But actually this year, it's very brand new what we are planning. We are going to have a studio on the fairground, which is quite important for you to know. We are going to broadcast from there to all over the world, but also uh, show what's happening in these studios on the fairground. We have a new format, which is called uh, Masterclasses. And uh, so I'm sure uh, Catherine is going to send out more details to you. We've uh, reworked our platform, Frankfurt Writes. We have more than 400,000 titles on that. And uh, the ticket sales actually started quite well. So I'm a bit fast right now, I, I realize that. But actually, I think we need a lot more room to talk. And you might have quite some questions as well. Since I don't know whether Gabi joined us now, I would like probably to hand over to Katrin to talk briefly about uh, the safety regulations this year. Yeah. Um, Tim, could you move on the presentation, please? Yeah, exactly. So we have quite an extensive uh, health and safety uh, plan in place for Frankfurter Buchmesse 2021, and we have informed about that. Uh, quite widely and here are just a few basics for you just uh, um, to to remember that we will we will have personalized tickets so everybody entering the premises will need a personalized ticket for each day they are entering um, the fair um, and they will need to show the uh, proof of complete vaccination protection the proof of recovery from covid or um, a negative test result uh, that is not longer no older than 24 hours and of course, we will have at the at the entrances of the Frankfurter Buchmesse there will be two test centers where where you can test um, or, or visitors can test themselves also short short notice. Of course, the 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 main thing to keep in mind is always to keep the distance of 1.5 meters between yourself and others. And we have we have ensured uh, from the planning of the fair that the distance can be kept at all times. We have really enlarged the uh, the hallways. Um, we have very generous, the, the planning of the entrance situations into the hall will be very generous. So um, it is given that you can that you can actually keep your keep your distance. Um, also, uh, uh, visitors are requested to to ask uh, to um, to wear a face mask all the time. But the mask may be removed when you are actually at a stand and you are seated and you can keep the distance to your uh, colleagues. And as you know, we have informed about that the limited number right now for visitors per day is maximum uh, 20, 25,000. Um, uh, as I said, we have the specialist layout. Um, we will also ensure that these agglomerations uh, are, will not happen. Uh, as, you, as you probably know, if you, if you have been to Frankfurt on the weekend, this is sort of a familiar setting that people are actually gathering, and then, of course, um, we will we will monitor the hall so that we can that we can react to that, and we will just disperse the crowd very uh, very gently if we see that, and of course, additional staff will be deployed in the halls to implement the, um, the health and safety plan, and of course, our our exhibitors are asked to uh, consider all the current safety and hygiene regulations. And we do have additional areas for, for catering and meetings throughout the fairground. Right, so I I will just continue very briefly. This this will, as uh, you might remember, if you, if you were tuned into last year's program, we have the Festhalle this year for the IID book fair stage. This is the, um, the main stage that we are uh, having this year. And, and this is what it will look like. Um, you can see that there are two containers there that will give it a bit of a more, um, uh, cozy touch um, but the the main fair is actually the one that you see here and of course the opening press conference and our uh, guests uh, and the opening of the Frankfurter Buchmesse will take place on this large stage. Here's just an example of what uh, what uh, our our exhibitors are doing this year in Frankfurt so so Penguin Random House have decided to actually uh, turn their stand into a huge stage and they will showcase uh, their authors. I think there will be 30 authors um, presenting their, their, their books at this stage um, and it will be in Hall 3. 
Um, and they're doing this together with the, with the German magazine, Der Stern. And this is something that Jürgen has mentioned earlier. This is the Frankfurt studio. This is a, a, a new, uh, um, truly hybrid event stage uh, that we have uh, down in, in Hall 4.0. You remember that um, in earlier days that the, um, the business club was located there, but this is now where we have, ha have the studio. And we are planning B2B events from there. Actually, they will be truly hybrid in that, that, um, uh, that some of the speakers will be uh, in Frankfurt in the studio. Uh, they, it will be live broadcasted uh, on our website um, and of course on YouTube as well. Uh, and we will also broadcast it onto a huge uh, LED screen on the Agora. So the visitors of the Frankfurt Buffet can also follow the program uh, and watch it on the screen. And here are just some highlights really. Uh, you, you probably have, uh, have, maybe you have had the chance to look at our, our press material today. So we have a, a cooperation with the WIPO and we will have a, um, we have a, we have a panel together with WIPO where they will be presenting the WIPO publishing um, report. Please move on. Um, and then we have the Frankfurt studio also in the, in the inside publishing uh, track. Uh, we have a, a program curated by Porter Anderson, who is, I think, here with us too. Um, so uh, he, uh, this will be on the Thursday um, of the fair, um, and it will it will tend to the independent publishing. So there will be a lot of independent publishing uh, independent publishers talking about the questions that are mostly important to them right now. Um, the digital program is this year we have moved it to the week before the Frankfurt Buchmesse so that, uh, that people will, will have time to focus on that. Um, as Jürgen already said, the new thing here is, is the master classes. They are free for participants. Participants though must uh, register or are, are asked to register. Um, and uh, they, they have until October 3rd um, for this. And, and the master classes are, are 45 minute slots um, with a lot of companies presenting best cases and, and uh, talking about also their, their, their um, um, yeah, best cases. Um, and um, yeah, and Frankfurt Conference will take place from 11 to 12 October. Um, it will be a two-part um, conference. The first, um, the first program is an academic publishing uh, track. Um, um, and it will be, um, and the second one will be for publishers. Um, yeah, and we are also continuing the uh, the Hof series. Uh, it will start on September 30th. It's actually in two days. Uh, this has been a very successful networking format that we will be continuing uh, until late in the year, and we hope to welcome everybody there. Yeah, thank you. I think you can unshare. Uh, Porter, um, since I see you, you're here, maybe you would like to expand on, on the program, the future of independent publishing. Um, it will be a two hour program originating in the Frankfurt studio. Um, and uh, some of the keynote publishers are Neleke Giel of Amsterdam Meridian Out Gallery, uh, London based literary scout Rebecca Servadio, and lots of more interesting speakers. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jürgen, if, if there's anything else that you would like to add here now. I think we should give as much time to questions as we can, because I think uh, since we have uh, participants here from all over the world, they might have different ideas what to expect from Frankfurt this year. Um, but I was wondering, uh, Jillian, I would like to hand over already to you because I'm so excited about having Canada this year after all the struggle we went through in the past <laughs> few years, we've been preparing this for more than three years. And now we had two years of a pandemic and now it's finally happening. So what do we have to expect? What whom are you going to send from Canada to Frankfurt? Well, uh, I mean, yes, it has been quite, quite the journey. Uh, I first became involved in this project in 2017. And prior to that, our president, Caroline Fortin, I believe started discussions with you in 2014 or 13. Yep. Um, so it's been <laughs> quite, quite the journey. Uh, we obviously were set back by the pandemic, but thanks to the Frankfurt de Buchmesse's goodwill, as well as 
Spain, Italy, and Slovenia. We were uh, given the opportunity to uh, show up again for 2021. And this time, we're so happy that we'll be able to be there in person. Um, so this is a big part of our presence this year is that we will have a hybrid presence. And um, I'll let Jennifer Ann speak to, to what that will look like as she is overseeing all of the programming. But I did just want to say that, um, you know, in the last few weeks, I've been asked a lot about what are, what are our expectations for this year. Um, and I want to say that from the beginning, this, this opportunity was an opportunity that the Canadian industry could not um, give up on. We have been so motivated from the beginning of this, of this partnership with the Frankfurt de Buchmesse and with our uh, Canadian government partners to make Canada shine. Um, so we're really happy to be here. And um, in terms of expectations, at the beginning of this journey in 2017, we set ourselves with the goal of having 200 titles translated into German. And today in 2021, we are close to uh, over 350 titles that have just been published or are about to be published in the year 2020 and 2021. So that is outstanding. I'd also like to point out that um, we've heard from our colleagues at the Canada Council who were instrumental as well in this project, that there has been a higher number of subscription to their translation programs internationally since Canada became the guest of honor. So for us, this project was always about showcasing Canadian authors and illustrators to the world. And the Frankfurt Book Fair was essentially the, the best um, starting place for, for, for our industry to really get the exposure that um, we think we deserve. So that's in a nutshell where we are and then for the more exciting part about what we'll be doing this <laughs> this fall in a couple of weeks i'll pass it on to my colleague jennifer ann yeah you're seeing quite a lot of people today but i want to stress again this has been quite a team effort yeah we've, we've been very close we've been growing together actually in these past 18 months our canadian friends everybody in frankfurt we've really been fighting to make this possible Having limited resources this year, it's a very different Frankfurt for us. And everybody was giving like 200% to make it happen. So I really appreciate this, uh, Jillian. Uh, thank you so much for your for the Canadian support. And Jennifer Ann. Rebonjour, <laughs> Jürgen. Guten Tag. Hi. Um, I'm one meter point five away from <laughs> my colleague here, uh, designer uh, Gonzalo Soldi, that will present uh, the pavilion in a minute. But I would like uh, to share um, our programming uh, intentions uh, for this year at the Frankfurt Book Fair. As I was uh, speaking this morning, um, we're very happy that um, I am here actually in, in Germany right now. And as I was saying uh, this morning, um, it is um, something extraordinary that we can, in this context, um, be here. Um, I think that we're all assembled here together virtually, and we've been doing so for the past nearly two years. And I think that um, programming events um, are uh, a very privileged space where you can meet human beings in the flesh, have an experience, talk about it, argue about it, and then uh, that dialogue uh, makes that you uh, push your view forward. So this is um, was actually the intention back in 2018 when uh, the curating committee uh, thought about uh, the programming. Of course, under we see it here, the umbrella singular plurality, uh, they had the will to be able to create a, a space for dialogue. So that has been quite a challenge with our virtual reality. Um, we have, as um, many on the line have um, viewed uh, last, uh, last uh, fair, um, we produced and programmed a virtual programming that we could um, attempt to create an intimate relationship uh, between uh, the audience, so the readers and the authors. And I'm very, um, again, happy that we can reconnect uh, the authors and the readers um, by a hybrid programming this year. So 
in person physically at the Frankfurt Book Fair, but also virtually, and Gonzalo is going to tell us in a second, uh, via our virtual pavilion. So this is where we really have the intention uh, that people that cannot travel to Frankfurt, uh, we wanted a space where they can have a bit of a sense of being in Frankfurt without the social component, which is very hard, I have to say, but at least we will have that space where you can enter the virtual pavilion, have a sense of the design of the pavilion, engage with the literary programming and the cultural programming. Um, and that I think um, is uh, quite of a, of a, how do you say, a challenge we took on with uh, so um, such a, a tight uh, time frame, but uh, we did it thanks to um, I think Jurgen touched on it. Our teams, I think it's a teams with an S effort of um, us and all our close collaborators. Um, I didn't say it this morning at the press conference, but I I really want to stress stretch out um, many thanks to our team back in Canada. Hello, Lifi. Um, I will speak up to the literary programming and uh, most is um, has to do with the support of my colleague Isabel Gauvin um, and of our other also team members and of our, I think, colleagues on the line with us uh, from uh, Canadian Heritage. So thank you very much. Um, let's speak about authors and illustrators. So. Um, this year, uh, how we're working is that we're promoting and we've been promoting uh, the entire delegation for the past two years in a virtual manner, of course, doing literary programming. But I was um, at the International Literature Berlin last week with a Canadian author from the delegation. So I'm happy that, you know, yes, we're going to the Frankfurt Book Fair and there will be programming there, but we've been working very closely with the embassy um, in Berlin and Latins, Quebec, à Berlin, to be able to program those authors, that entire delegation in the last two years. And boom, 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 will be coming with us <laughs> to Frankfurt. Uh, Michael Crummy, um, an author that um, is known to many uh, German um, readers. And then Michel Jean, an Inu author. Um, with Kukum, uh, which is uh, um, a recent uh, publication um, uh, that is uh, a very, if you haven't read it, um, it's a, a very touching book and we're very happy he's joining us. Danny Laferriere, um, he pas besoin de présentation. He doesn't need a presentation, I think, but uh, he will be with us uh, for um, some days of the fair. Canissa Lubrin, uh, c'est une auteure, une poète, une éditrice et une enseignante. Donc, uh, she will be also joining uh, the Frankfurt Book Fair in person. Catherine Mavrikakis, a uh, novelist and essayist, her uh, recent publication, Der Himmel über Bay City. And Paul Sissi Quassis, who um, published a, um, not himself, but he, uh, worked on a very beautiful um, image book from the Cree uh, nation. Vivek Shraya is also joining us. She is a um, an artist, multidisciplinaire, uh, a writer, a musician, and uh, she recently uh, published um, in English uh, the very uh, famous book that I really like, I'm Afraid of Men. E Kim Thuy, um, who uh, is recent a publication, uh, Grosse Bruder, Kleine Schwester. Uh, she will also uh, be joining us for the week. Et Nancy Vaux, oui, um, avec uh, Ranger and, and Altla. She is a uh, children uh, author and illustrator, um, and she will also be part of the delegation. So we're very happy that um, these authors have agreed to come in person. And uh, we hope that, of course, we will be programming and we had to revise a little bit our programming planning um, with uh, the reduced um, scope and size of the pavilion to meet the, the COVID measures in place. But we're hoping uh, to create um, some moments with, as I just mentioned, the audience and those authors where we will be speaking up on teams as um, youth, women, indigenous, uh, political and social economic uh, issues, environment, 
and of course uh, everything that pertains to our beautiful country uh, we are a vast country 28 times bigger than germany so we will be speaking about how space influences also uh, the writers and the many cultures and many languages that um, that form and compose our literatures so thank you very much and now i will pass it on to la pièce de résistance <laughs> He had a lot of attention this morning, and I understand why. Uh, Gonzalo Soldi. Hello. Well, my name is Gonzalo Soldi. I am co-founder and creative director at Mirari, which is a multidisciplinary studio in Montreal that imagine ideas that bring people together. So by bringing people together, this is a, a good example. This, uh, this pavilion we imagine and we finally will, will get in the, bring to the real world. Uh, the concept of this, this pavilion is based on the richness of Canada natural environment and the, uh, and the different themes as a, of water, mountain, forest. It, this pavilion wants to think of Canada territory as an inspiration for Canadian authors, illustrators and creators. So the goal is that we embark the uh, visitors to a literary and metaphorical uh, journey through, the, through this space. Um, the scenery is varied and it is uh, stunning. It's shaped by unique ge geological phenomena and weather. So each one of these waves you see represent uh, a roll of paper. Uh, of course, you know, literature start on paper and this is the way we started to, to print in books and uh, this is the way we, we, sh we used to share it. And we wanted to think uh, of literature as something contemporary that honor this paper, but also get influenced by, by new media. Uh, in this, this papers flying through the pavilion will be uh, amplified by lighting, sound, and uh, interactive video effects, so people will be able to, to pass through it. In terms of themes, uh, as we, we thought this morning, we are passing to a journey that it's a, a guided journey. And the, fear, the first theme is the, the water. So water is a source of life all across the, the territory. There is water all, uh, all around Canada. And, uh, and it is in constant motion. Water moves us. Once we arrive to the pavilion, the first thing we will see is this, this wall, which is the, the, second, uh, the second theme. It's where we discover the mineral which is a resilient uh, material. It's the, the raw material uh, of inspiration. Inside this, uh, this wave, we will find this interactive installation. Those are our tests of a prototype we did in Montreal. So we will be able to meet with, uh, with some of the authors that uh, won't be able to come. Uh, of course, some of them will be here for real, but some of them, we invite them to, uh, to be there uh, virtually and tell us what will that what they will tell us if they were, they were here in, in Frankfurt. After the mineral, we arrive at the at the right of your image to the vegetal, to the previous image, please. And um, after the mineral, you, we arrive to the the vegetal, the plants, which is the the writing. It's a living thing. It's a, an open air maze. It's a repository for stories. It's actually, this uh, theme represents the instinct and the language, um, combining them to, to come to life. So we came from the abstract water to the, to the mineral, which is a raw material that needs to be shaped, to the, to the vegetal, to the plants, that, that, that's where the, the, lead, the, the poetry start, uh, start bor uh, burning. This is how idea, an idea is shaped it takes, uh, it, it takes shape through time and through reflection. And finally, we arrive to the last uh, theme, which is us, which is the, 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 the poetry, which is the, the human touch. Uh, the world or the genesis of emotion taking shape. Um, and in this place, we'll have another interactive installation. Uh, and we can go to the next slide. Uh, those are, again, some tests we did in Montreal. Um, but we can, when, once we cross this, this wave, 
will produce letters that will fly around uh, the, the, the pavilion. And the, the, the imagine we want to give is that this idea that, that was abstract, that got shaped, that got words, that got, got the birds and, and vegetable became real when it uh, actually touches and, we, and when it moves us for, for real. It's the same process that happens when you read a book the, the book, it makes sense when we read it and when it gives us emotions. So this is what we want to recreate. And finally, the final step of this pavilion is the horizon. So it's a, uh, a point of view where we can see all the, the country we have passed through, all the territories we have passed through. And uh, this is a place where we want people to, to think of, of their journey of their personal journey, of the journey in Frankfurt, uh, but also in the, in, the, in a general point of view, it's, um, we describe it as a, as a fertile ground of knowledge. We want to go behind the horizon for a broader perspective uh, and build the world to come. This whole idea of the physical pavilion makes sense with the, the virtual pavilion, because of course we won't be as many as we would love to be in, in Frankfurt, but we want to welcome uh, many people that, that, uh, that can join us virtually. So we have this version of the pavilion virtually where they can pass through these different themes and they can see what's going on on the, on the different steps of the pavilion. And then we'll have, of course, videos and pictures of the, the pavilion itself um, built in during, during the, the Frankfurt Messe. So that's the, this is a, a small video of, uh, uh, of how it looks and how people will, will walk through. Um, and I think it needs the internet connection, but I, I invite you to either come to see it for real or go to the virtual <laughs> pavilion. Uh, so you will see the, the, the the actual the actual journey in the pavilion. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is really, really great and really excited and I'm I'm absolutely keen and can't wait to be there in person and and see it. Yeah. Right, so we have some time left now for your questions, and I, I would encourage you to ask them. Um, and please use the uh, Q and A tool that you have here um, uh, below if you if you would ask them. Since we do have a lot of trade journalists here, I, I'm sure you have some questions regarding the conference program, our trade activities. Or maybe we've been talking too much, too fast. The pavilion impressed you so much. It's it's quite po poetic, and actually it shows the diversity of Canada. So, congratulations um, to the team, to Gonzalo for having worked on this for a long time, reworked it many times, and now coming up with this astonishing presentation. I can see a question here regarding um, the presence yeah, of Chinese added, publishers. Uh, are you expecting Chinese publishers this year or others from Asia aside from Indonesia and Taiwan? Yes, we do have several uh, Chinese publishers attending. Uh, we do have a national stand, which is mostly manned from, uh, from a Chinese delegation, which is already based in Europe. So they are not coming straight from China. But we also do have some publishers coming from China. And uh, probably the next question is, are there people from India? Yes, there are people from India coming as well with their stands. Yeah, thank you. I have a question here from Judith Pereira. How will Canadian indie publishers be represented through the fair? I would leave this one to Jillian. Sure, yes. Uh, so the Canadian, <clears throat> there are two Canadian collective stands. At, the Frankfurt Book Fair every year, uh, Leave Canada Books and Quebec Edition, and both of them will have uh, stands uh, this year, which uh, actually both stands have a similar look and feel to our pavilion, 
uh, Gonzalo and Mirari uh, worked with both Lead Canada Books and Quebec Edition on the new design of these collective stands. And in terms of representation, uh, both stands, uh, roughly uh, the latest numbers I have in total um, for Canadian participation, there's uh, roughly between 25 to 30 publishers who plan on being in uh, Germany this year. And that's also, I'm also including in that number uh, literary agents. There are a, a few literary agents who will also be attending. Um, they won't be on the collective stands, but they will be um, likely, I guess, in the, the agent center. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have another question here from Porter. Hi there, will be the nine Canadian authors traveling to Frankfurt be appearing at the Messe and will they be in the pavilion or elsewhere on the fairground? Um, they will be programmed in the pavilion. So normally, uh, I guess everybody knows this on the line, but um, in a regular context, I don't know if it's ever going to happen again, but there's a five day programming on two stages in the pavilion. And this year, um, to fit the, the COVID protocol at the Messe, uh, we have one stage only. So the authors will be programmed there also in the seat of Frankfurt and on the other stages um, at the Frankfurt Book Fair. Yeah, and we have a premiere with the Canada night on Wednesday night in the ID Festhalle, where I think uh, eight of the delegation authors will be participating and also Remotely, uh, Margaret Atwood will also be part of it. So that's the Canada night in on the RD stage. Exactly. Yeah. And just speaking of remotely, because I should have mentioned this in my answer to Judith, but there will be representation for publishers who are not able to make it to the Frankfurt Book Fair via the collective stands as well. So there will um, be, I know that Leave Canada Books is going to be representing a number of publishers um, who will not be there in person, but their books will be there. Great, yeah, that's uh, true. Yes, we are. My colleague Tim Weisbanger, he's also here on the team, he's already putting together a huge exhibition on Canadian titles that will be on display in the, um, in the pavilion. Yeah. I have a question from Klaus de Burr. Uh, you mentioned something on the presence of US and GB publishers. What do you expect? I think you're muted. No, I'm not muted. I was just thinking whether where, where I have on my desk um, the numbers and statistics. As far as I know, it's, uh, it's about 60 publishers uh, coming from the UK and uh, from North America. Yeah, but uh, you can go to our website, to our catalog, and you see the, uh, the exhibitors catalog there. So you can check it yourself. And also, if you download our app, uh, which is uh, which got updated like ten days ago, there's also an exhibitor catalog, so you can check there who's going to be in Frankfurt or not. Yeah, thank you. So I have a question from Porter: How early will media members and trade visitors need to begin the registration credentialing process this year with vaccination, etc. requirements? Will this need to start fairly soon? Yes, of course, the accreditation has already started. So you can you can definitely log onto your uh, My Book Fair account and uh, upload your credentials. Um, and uh, as, as you know, also for the press, we will we will ask you to, to sort of get a pass for the Book Fair for every day. Uh, and also you, you will need the valid um, um, testing and all that also every day. So that's that's due to the security measures this year. But the accreditation process has started and I will post the link here in, in the chat. Yeah, and I'm just reading Ed's um, question about 70 tables in the LITAC. Yes, this is confirmed 70 tables in the LITAC, but we have a new format we talked about earlier, um, which is called workstations. So uh, quite a few publishers, agents, rights people have booked these workstations, which means you can have um, um, like a it's, it's, it's a table, it's internet access just for a day. So quite a few uh, professional customers, trade visitors are going to use these workstations. So I can't really tell you numbers right now, but it's more than 70 than are listed in the agent center. 
I think it's 140, 45, yeah. Right, um, okay, I have another question here by Manuel Sierra Alonso um, from Lado Berlin. Is there anything you could tell us about Latin American participants in this edition? Thank you very much. Actually, this, these were the numbers I was looking for and I can find them. Uh, there's very little presence from Latin America. There are some national stands actually coming, but I do believe they are again manned by people who are based in Europe right now. But we can look into this and I would like to ask you again, please check the catalog for that. I know that uh, since Spain is going to be guest of honor next year and Spain is very, very active, so we are going to have a, a quite a Spanish presence on the fairground, but also um, in the Instituto Cervantes here in Frankfurt. And they're also uh, reaching out to uh, trade visitors and publishers from Latin America. Okay. Um, sorry, I had a question here, 145 agents. I, I meant 141 uh, workstations. Okay, I'm checking if there's other questions. Um, a second. Yeah, somebody uh, somebody said that they can't copy the link, so I will I will share them with you after this meeting. Um, and I don't see any other questions right here. So um, if you do have any, please ask them. You know, but we're also prepared to answer your questions after that. And, uh, Actually, Judith Pereira um, asked again, will there be any else, anything else in the city showcasing the Canadian arts? Jillian, you want to, or Jennifer? Jennifer Ann? Ann. Um, <clears throat> yes, and the cultural, I mean, we're uh, piloting uh, the literary side of things. And there's um, a whole cultural programming uh, by uh, many partners and collaborators uh, from um, the federal agencies that is planned. Uh, there's information um, in the press kits um, on that end. And uh, we can we can sh for sure share that. Judith, I have your email. If <laughs> you permit me, I, I can send you the information um, uh, after this, uh, this uh, virtual meetup. Yeah. No, there is a, an entire program in place. Yeah. Um, but maybe we have to mention, Catherine, as well, that the city is really participating in the book fair. We have about uh, um, 50 events planned with mostly German publishers, but some of them are focusing also on the Canadian program. And uh, we, we also do have um, uh, from the city of Frankfurt, uh, the open books, which is also focusing on translated authors from all over the world, but especially in Canada. So there's going to be a lot of activities all over Frankfurt. I mentioned Cervantes Institute, which obviously is focusing on Spanish language, but all the other cultural institutions here in Frankfurt do participate in our authors program as well. We do have the fellowship, we do have the invitation program. So a lot of things might sound very similar or um, you've heard them before, yeah. So. Uh, it's going to be, on the one hand, it's going to be a very, um, you called it before, I called it this morning, actually, extraordinary. It's an extraordinary, it's a very special book fair, but a lot of things are going to stay the same. Yeah, and Canadian authors will also participate in the open books format that the city of Frankfurt um, uh, is doing in the evening. So there are two, two literary festivals. One is the, the book fest and the other is the, the open books. Um, and um, yeah, and, and there are about 200 authors and the numbers are rising uh, who are actually going to be in Frankfurt um, in, in the book fair week and presenting their works on the different stages, yeah. Uh, I have another question here. How much is the difference in the statistics between the numbers of foreign publishers in 2019 before COVID and this year? I don't know, I have the correct numbers right now. Maybe Katrin can help me out, but actually we used to have about close to 60% international publishers. And we used to have about uh, 7,000 uh, exhibitors. So this would mean about 4,000, yeah? 
So which brings us down uh, this year, I would say, since uh, the hall is booked out, I, I think half of it might be, in, is, is probably international. So I would guess between seven and 800 international. But this is a guess. If you want to count the numbers, you can do that, but we are going to publish in these numbers in the next few days anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I see that there are some questions. Um, yeah, Porter, is there any information we should have at this point about an opening ceremony, opening press conference? Uh, yes, the invitations. So, the, so the dates are the dates that you that you know. The opening press conference will be on Tuesday, nineteenth of October at eleven um, a.m. in the Festhalle. It will be we have we will have a live stream for that as well. And the opening ceremony will be um, on Tuesday night at five p.m. also at the Festhalle. And invitations are due to go out this week. So the invitations for the opening and for the press conference will follow. Um, next week. Yeah. yeah, if uh, if you don't have any other questions right now, uh, we we hope to be in touch with you now. Um, from here through the fair, you are always welcome to to get in touch with us. Also, since. Uh, Jürgen mentioned that this is a teamwork. I would also shout out to my colleagues, Alex Ixley Cox and Erin Cox, who are here with us today from and, and are in charge of our PR in the UK and in, in the US. And I would also say thank you to Frank and to Tim, who have been uh, guiding us through this meeting here today, um, and the entire uh, press team of the Frankfurter Buchmesse, who are working also very hard right now. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, and we we'll very much look forward to seeing you very soon in, in about three weeks time in Frankfurt. Merci beaucoup, Catherine. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. much. See you soon. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Ciao.